Hey guys, so this week's episode of The Dentist Show is going to be slightly different. We divided it into two parts, part one and part two. We're going to launch part one this week and we're going to launch part two next week. Part one is going to be about his journey as a PT, how he started his businesses, how he met his wife and just basically his story. And part two is going to share tips on how to start your business and basically entrepreneurship. It's going to be fun guys. Let me know in the comments what do you guys think of this format and enjoy. Three, two, one, and we are live. Welcome everyone to another episode of the Derdish Show. I'm so excited for this episode with the amazing Abdullah Laskari. It's the first time you met today. He came to my house. Oh my yeah, studio. first time we meet, yeah. Welcome. Thank you, thank you for having me. Well, it's a pleasure. Welcome to the Derdish Show, a place to sit back, relax, and enjoy a good conversation. Abdullah is an entrepreneur, business owner, health expert, the first PT in Kuwait I just heard before this episode. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Abdullah. Um, grew up in Kuwait, mm -hmm. uh, moved to the States for college, uh, lived there for a while, worked for a little bit, um, came back, did the regular, you know, looked for a job, worked in my field. And after a while, after a few years in corporate, um, you know, I felt it's, it's, it was time to move on, mm -hmm. move on and do other things, things that I was uh, really passionate about, th things that I loved. And uh, that's how the fitness journey really started. I, I think it's also started at a really young age. Uh, I played organized sports, you know, since I was maybe eight or nine years old. Mm -hmm. uh, basketball, volleyball, you know, track and field. And throughout college, you know, I, I stuck to uh, sports and going to the gym and working out and, and all that. So um, uh, I think that's where I really developed uh, the passion for personal training, you know, being in the gym. Um, literally, I was the gym rat, you know. <laughs> you walked into this college campus gym uh, morning, evening, afternoon, you found me there. Mm. So uh, it really it really grew on me. Nice. Yeah. Okay. And before this episode, you were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So before this episode, you were talking about your story in America, man. Yes. That's I, I was so fascinated. Yeah. Um, as I mentioned, you know, I went to school there and, and I started working. You know, I started as an intern and the place that I worked at offered me a job. Um, and I was pretty settled, you know, I liked my job. Uh, I was working for an ABC News affiliate in, in Richmond, Virginia, which is called uh, WRT Channel 8 News. Uh, started off as an assistant cameraman, you know, uh, f folding wires and, wow. and filing uh, film, film and all that. So. Uh, and moved up with the years, you know, they offered me a job and eventually I, I produced the morning show, which is a very short, like 18 minute show, but it was a lot of fun. And high um, production too, huh? Yeah, yeah, high production. Mm. I mean, back then it's late 90s, so uh, it's not as you know sophisticated yeah. as, as it is right now. Um, and back then, you know, I was dating my girlfriend, which is my wife right now. Uh, got a phone call, you know, late night, and my parents, my my siblings told me that, you know, my, my dad is between uh, life and death. So packed my stuff and in 48, 48 hours, I'm, I'm back home. And I gave my wife, my wife now, girlfriend back then, car keys, apartment keys, I left everything behind. Wow. And she's like, when are you coming back? I'm like, I don't know. And this I don't know turned into a five year overseas journey, uh, you know, long distance relationships. And back then, you know, there's no WhatsApp, there's no social media. Nothing. It was emails and text messages. That, that was it. Mm. Um, and she stuck to it. You know, I give her a lot of props till this day. I'm like, you know what, you're, you're a fighter. Wow. Uh, so I came home, you know, started working Kuwait Fund, then Gulf Bank and then Global Investment House. And Global decided to send me on a five day convention in New York City. So I emailed her. I'm like, look, you know, I haven't seen you in years. 
and it emailed would be nice. her. Emailed her, yeah. Because <laughs> there's no other there's no other way to get in touch. <laughs> wow. Uh, I haven't seen you in years. You know, I'd love to see you and hang out, catch up, all that. And she she didn't reply. So I sent another one three days later. I'm I'm gonna I'm flying out. I need to know. Mm. Uh, and she didn't respond. But you know, funny enough, I land in JFK and she's standing right in front of me. Boom! I know, right? And <laughs> it was, you know, literally, it was like uh, seeing an angel, you know, sent wow. from above, literally. Wow. So uh, we hung out, you know, we talked, we had a great time. And I was off to work in the morning and she's like, we'll catch up for, for lunch. So we're hanging out at lunch and she's like, first question, what are you, what are you doing with your life? I'm like, what do you mean? It's like us, what's, what's going on here? Do you expect to come fly in for five days and see me and, and that's it? You're back on your way? I'm like, oh, yeah, no, yes. <laughs> I don't know, maybe, I'm not sure. I didn't know what to say. Um, so she's like, let me, let me put it, let me lay it out for you. Mm. Uh, either, you know, we're together for life or you can just forget all about me. So it's your decision now. You have to make your, you have to decide. So that's, I mean, wow. After five years and on the first date, that's, that's a huge load to handle, right? Oh, yeah. So um, we hung out for the five days and I came home and, you know, I really thought about what she said. And is this the girl that I want to be with, you know, for the rest of my life? Um, She's proven a lot of things to me, you know. She stood by me when I was uh, vulnerable, at, at my weakest. Uh, she stood by me when I wasn't even there, you know. She never gave up on me. So I'm like, yes, uh, this, this is the person the that I want, you know. Exactly. Who else would I want? Mm. Uh, excuse my language, when the, you know, when the shit hits the fan, that's the person you want on your side, right? Exactly. Wow. So talked to my dad, you know, um, told him, you know, I'm thinking about getting married and uh, this is the person I have in mind. Um, fortunate enough, you know, my dad is a highly educated person, very, very intelligent, highly intellectual, um, very liberal as well. So uh, he gave me three pieces of advice. He's like, look, we don't know this person, this girl. We don't know her family. We don't know anything about her other than what you're telling me right now. So just make sure that this girl can carry your last name. She can raise your kids the way you want them to be raised. And she can, you know, keep a home for you and your family. And this is pretty deep, you know, when <laughs> I know, right? Wow. Uh, yeah, and a very minimal, but straight to the point. Oh. It wasn't like a 40 minute conversation. It was that was it. Wow. You know, and I'm off to bed and I thought about this. I thought about what he told me for four or five days. Each question you could think about like individually. Huh? Yeah. I mean, uh, can this girl, you know, uh, raise my kids in, in a country that is foreign to her? Mm. Uh, is she willing to move here? You know, can mm. she carry my last name? Can she do all this? So I was convinced just because of the experience we've been through. Um, so I called her like five days later. I'm like, yeah, what's up? What's going on? How you been? La 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 la. You know, I talked to my family and it doesn't seem like it's going to fly. You know, they're really <laughs> against it. You know, they're, they're all for like Kuwaiti, uh, Kuwaiti girl. You know, oh. they want a Kuwaiti uh, daughter-in-law, so on and so forth. So she started crying. Pardon. And I felt really bad, you know, for pulling like a, it's a joke, <laughs> but, you know, maybe it wasn't the right timing. Yeah. But I told her, no, you know, my dad is very understanding and uh, it's on. We're on. We're on for life. Wow. So, you know, how women are, it's very, still so surprising to me. Within 30 seconds of this conversation, she starts planning. <laughs> Engagement party, <laughs> wedding dates. Oh. How am I going to fly in? How my parents are going to fly wow. in? My brother studied in Seattle at the time. How are we going to, are we going to invite your 30 seconds, dude. Like, <laughs> it's unbelievable. So, uh, yeah. And that's, uh, and that's history. You know, wow. it's been 11 years we've been married. Yep. Amazing, man. Yeah.
Congratulations, uh, thank you, thank you, Habibi. Uh, 2008, and we moved. She moved back with me in 2008. Yeah. And how do you think? How important it, uh, is it to have someone there for you, especially as an entrepreneur, when you have ups and downs constantly, having yeah. a partner versus being alone? Um, you need someone that not only listens to you but really believes in your vision. Um, she needs to understand everything you go through. When you build a business, dude, it's, you know, it's day and night. There's no time off. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day. You're on call 24-7. Um, a lot of women can't deal with that. It was hard in the beginning. When we started building our business, and uh, she's my partner in one of our businesses, and she's, the, she's our CEO for our uh, supplement business as well. She runs it fully. Wow. So um, you need someone that really believes in your vision and will stick by you. Mm. No matter how hard or good it is, you know, you can't even as an entrepreneur, you can't relax when things are good. You're like, yeah, I'm good. You know, we're set for life. It's not like that. Mm. You're always pushing. You're always mm. striving to be better. You always want to improve your business. You want to always want to mm. add on, you know, so uh, there's really no time off. Especially in a place like Kuwait or in a field, in, in a pool full of sharks, right? I mean, like, oh, yeah. just sleep or just, oh, yeah. you're going to be left behind like yeah. that. Yeah. Boom, huh? Yeah, there's, uh, you know, a lot of families that originally come from business. And a lot of guys our age today inherit multi-million dollar businesses. And with the education they get and all the knowledge and uh, um, people around them, they want to enhance grandfather's business. So they look at you. They're like, oh, what is he doing? Let me see if I can, you know, get a little piece of that market. Let me see if Abdullah's mm. willing to give up a little bit of his market. Equity, so yeah. they're, they're aware. They're aware and they're out there, you know, yeah, and they exactly. want to add. They don't want to inherit a business that's from 1955 and just keep doing the same thing. You, you won't survive. Wow, yeah. that's a very valid point. I yeah, like that. for sure. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. And let's go back to the partner part. How do you guys separate business from family? I mean, it's, it's something I, I haven't experienced, but I'm sure it's, yeah. it's something that's ongoing or I don't know. What do you think? I, I think for us, it, it really changed when we had kids. Before pre-kids, um, we talked, you know, even when we we're chilling at home, we talked business. Uh, let's so, do this with the gym. Let's do this with the with the protein company, with the supplement stuff. You know, we should do this maybe next year. It's, it's always there. It's within the conversation. Not all the time, but, you know, yeah. it's always within. But when we're with the kids, that's it. You can't. You have to, you have to really cut it off. Mm. Uh, you have to put an end to it. So past 5, 5.30 p.m., no business talk until the next day. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because we need to... I mean, I, I'm, I'm up at 4 a.m. every day. Really? Yes. Uh, weekends too, so... No I'm, I'm, I'm in the gym at 5 a.m. Nice. And I leave work around 4.30 or 5. So I'm away from home 12 hours a day. Uh, so this time with my family and my children is, is limited. It's, it's 5 till 8 because they're in bed by then. Sorry. So I need to really spend these three hours with them, full attention on them. I can't be doing anything else. No phone, no TV, no nothing. Whatever they want to talk about, whatever they want to discuss... Mm -hmm. You know, daddy's there for you. Nice. Um, and I think the kids have taught us to do this. Uh, it came instinctly, I think. We never planned it. When it was me and her, we, we talked business all the time. But with the children, you have to really cut it off. What are other things that you learned from being a father or your kids? Um, that they are the most important thing in life. It doesn't matter what you have, all these positions, all these material things. It uh, doesn't matter how many businesses you own, how much money you have. It's all about them at the end of the day. Uh, everything you leave behind is for them. Uh, your, the name you build, the reputation in the business world, uh, the reputation you build as a man, they will carry on later on. So when they, the minute they're born, you realize that None of this is for me, actually. I'm okay, I'm passionate about it, and I love doing it, and this is what wakes me up and keeps me going every single day. 
But at the end of the day, it's all for them. Wow, that's 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 beautiful. Maybe <laughs> at the same time, yeah, I don't like because that makes me think about my dad, you know, and that makes yeah. me think about how they feel about our lives and the pressure on them. So that's it's a lot of pressure yeah, having man. kids, and uh, to them, you're the only thing that matters, nothing else, mm. you know. And that's how I feel about my kids. Fine. Yeah. So I think it's yeah. it's the parents' approval. Somehow it's instinctively gee, in our subconscious mind. We just want to, we want that approval from our family of parents. Some somehow, some way or another, you know. Yes, for so sure. So I think yeah. that um, yeah, man. I mean, parenthood it's something that's hopefully I'll jump on that train one day. Inshallah. I'm really excited. Allah wafiq habibi. I saw I saw you even have a British bulldog or yeah, we yeah. have an English bulldog King. Yeah. King is our lucky charm because. When we bought King 15 days later, we found out that my wife was pregnant. Wow. Yes. So he's our lucky. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice, man. Yeah. He's adorable, yeah. man. He is. Have yeah. you always been an animal person? Uh, I did have dogs back in the States, but moving back, living with your parents, you know, my mom is not really fond of uh, dogs. So mm -hmm. uh, it was tough to own a, own a puppy here. But now that we have the kids and... You know, my wife was never a dog lover. Really? But after King, she she's in love with him. I think she's in love with him more than she's in love with me. <laughs> yeah, man, he's adorable. Yeah. Um, I was looking through your bio before um, I was talking you a little bit on sure. Instagram. Yeah. And I realized that you own some gyms. Sure. Correct? Or yeah. co-founder some gyms. Yes. And 7030. Also. Yes, is our uh, meal delivery. Meal so delivery. Service, yes. And a supplement. Evolve supplements. Evolve yes. supplements. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about each one of these? Um, my my journey started off as a in this industry as a freelance personal trainer. Uh, I had a full time job. You know, I worked in many corporate uh, places, but I PT'd after work. Uh, like you said, I was the first uh, Kuwaiti personal trainer with an actual uh, certificate or training diploma. That's crazy. Yeah, man. That's uh, crazy. What year was that? This is, I gained my uh, PT certificate back in 2000, I think. And nobody had that before? Though? Back then, nobody, nobody was certified. I mean, people trained here and there. They helped out, you know, buddies worked out together, but nobody was really certified, officially certified. Officially certified. Wow. And I was going, you know, from hotel to hotel, gym to gym, home to home, training my clients. Uh, I did it for eight straight years, believe it or not, until I walked into this underground personal training facility in New York City. Okay. Uh, it's a back alley parallel to Fifth Avenue. Okay. And it had a chalkboard sign, just like this one, a little mm -hmm. bit bigger, that says PT sessions and an arrow pointing downwards. Just like that. So I walk, I, you know, I, I walk into this place and it's as big as this room with a few pieces of equipment and this, you know, he's a pretty old guy sitting behind the counter. He's like, are you looking for a PT? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, but I would love to see your prices. And this brochure started three notebooks of personal notes. Wow. Yes, that have turned into a business manual today for gym startups, wow. uh, personal training, um, nutrition, you name it. So I'm like, you know, how would this, this trip to New York really opened my eyes. I'm like, how would some place like this work in Kuwait? So I, I, I did a lot of research. I started adjusting and searching and we opened the first personal training facility in Kuwait, which was in Kuwait City. Only personal training? Only personal training, no membership, no nothing. You buy your packages, you buy your sessions, you train. And after an hour, you're out. The next client walks in. And a lot of people made fun of us. They're like, dude, who's, you're, you know, that's exactly what they told me. They're like, you're not in New York City. Who's going to come to a gym that's, you know, in a, in a business tower? And believe it or not, this place was fully booked. We had waiting lists for the first two years. Wow. Yes. And within a two year, 24, 20 to 24 month span, nine gyms with a similar concept opened in a within like a two mile radius around us every tower next to us had a personal training facility so um 
Kuwait is known for copycat business, you know. Uh, three or four of these gyms were clients of mine. You know, they're like, dude, this guy has waiting lists. You know, we should do this. We should, yeah, you know, and it happens, which is fine. I don't mind it at all. I mean, when people copy you, you know, I always say this. That means you're doing something right. Nice. And even when you copy, you need a long time to catch up. You're going to play catch up the whole time you're in business. Ooh, yes. Because you started behind. You started behind. And uh, especially in Kuwait, people don't uh, specialize in, in, in a business that they open up. Like, I'm here today with Eid. I'm like, man, this guy has a million followers. His YouTube channel is off the chains. I'm going to start my own podcast and I know nothing about it. Mm. So I have the money to do it, but I'm going to play catch up to Eid for the next five to eight years probably wow. until I understand the formula and by then it's going to be too late until I figure it it's out it's going to be way too late mm. so um, we've seen this not only in the gym business every other the food industry the cafes everything that's going on right now um, oh yeah the cafes and the food industry it's ridiculous crazy, I mean man. but um, so it's fine entrepreneurs are getting into trouble because of yani, they're getting funding for the wrong businesses and yes. then they're stuck with the debt yeah and they can't pay it off because number one you're not specialized number two you're not passionate about this you're not willing to spend 20 hours a day in your shop are you you're not you just want to do it because oh everyone else is doing it and the guys that went to whatever coffee roasting school or have you know diplomas in in coffee and how to make coffee and have barista degrees you know, uh, are, are being successful because they know what they're doing. You're not. You're, you're in the sake of it just to say, oh, I'm a, I'm a coffee, uh, you know, coffee place owner or a cafe or whatever. And it doesn't work like that. Man, yeah, it's crazy, though. Well, I mean, <clears throat> I was the E-Myth. It's a business yes. book. And they talk about how technicians usually start businesses. So if I'm a baker, I'm, I'll open a bakery. If I'm yeah. a PT, I'll open like a gym, for example. Sure. But he says that this is the main reason why businesses fail. Okay. Because you'll need to be a leader instead of being the technician. You learn it. You learn it. You learn it. You, you're forced to learn it mm. uh, with time. With time. Yeah. So you're in like th- supplements and the delivery, the food delivery? Food delivery service, yes. The service yeah. and the gym. These three yeah. industries, man. Yeah. They're hard to get it's, it. To- it's hard. And uh, dealing with people on a daily basis is the most difficult that I found out. I dealt with my clients, yeah. but clients are very different than running a whole facility with staff and members and uh, humans. Y- humans, <laughs> yes. Um, but you know, um, going back to your point, which is very valid, by the way, the technician cannot run a business. Mm. I'm the tech. I, I am a technician, right? But when I started owning businesses, the first thing that came to mind is like, man, I need to go back to school. And that's the first thing I did. I went back to get my master's in sports management. Wow. Yes, because I'm like, you know what? I might get by here without this degree, but this degree will really open my eyes and uh, broaden my vision and make me understand what it takes to really... First, you need, like you mentioned, you need to become a leader Mm -hmm. and you lead by example. People are not going to follow you just because, oh, he said so. It doesn't matter if you're the business owner. If you don't know what you're talking about, people are going to laugh at you. Exactly. So you need to lead by example. First one to clock in, last one to check out. You know, um, do all the things necessary where people not necessarily look up to you, but are willing to follow in your footstep. Mm. And uh, that's the first thing I did. I'm like, man, I need to go back to school. I mean, that, that, just that by itself shows the qualities in you, man. When you said Thank that, you, that when, when I went down that basement, that was my manual, my business manual. Yes. I don't think anyone would ever say that sentence, you know? So I think that I shows think your character. Other you know? people would look at, you know, this, is, this place is really not all that, or excuse my language, it's a shithole. Exactly. But I looked at it maybe in a different way. I'm like, this place could work in Kuwait mm. with the right uh, people, with the right location, with the right marketing, Mm -hmm. um, word of mouth, you know, bring in all the right people in the beginning and and let it fly and see how it goes. 
I mean, you have to be a risk taker when you're in, when you're in business. Okay. Nothing is guaranteed. It doesn't matter how on point your business plan is, how on point your forecasts are. Uh, you'll, you'll dip. Shit will happen. You'll dip more frequently than you'll, than you'll realize. Wow. Yeah, for sure. Man, this segment was supposed to be about your story, but we dove into business so fast okay. and I love it. And we I did, love it. I'm so excited. We did a little bit of both, yeah. I got, I got a bunch <laughs> of questions, man, ready. I'm so excited. So that was part one of this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comments whether you like this format of the Dead to Show. And stay tuned next week for part two with Abdullah Laskari. Take care. Because baby, I feel real good and I wish I would. It's got to be against the law to look this damn good. Everybody watch out. Watch out now. I'm ready for a good time, and I came to groove. The whole band's here, and we came to move. Got a fresh haircut and two new shoes. We're here all night, like we got nothing to lose. Coming out the jacket, cause we're turning up the heat. I wanna see you clapping when you get up out your seat. It's time to make it happen when we hit these streets. I'm coming in hot, and I can't be beat. Watch out now. Baby, watch out now. Watch out. I'm going up, I'm a man on a mission with no misses and I'm looking for love Oh, I'm just looking for love It's got to be against the law to look this damn good Cause baby, I feel real good and I wish I would It's got to be against the law to look this damn good, baby Everybody watch out Last call for some alcohol And don't forget to tip The sun went down but we still relate The band's still going playing all ahead I can't stop now, too legit to quit I'm coming out the jacket cause we're turning up the heat I wanna see you clapping when you get up out your seat It's time to make it happen when we hit these streets I'm coming in hot and I can't be beat Watch out now Everybody watch out Watch out Baby, I feel real good and I wish I would It's gotta be against the law to look this damn good, baby watch out now. Everybody watch out, watch out now. Everybody watch out